I don't care if you have to own everything. Oh, look at that. I fucked this up. Oh, yeah. Restart. Okay, who cares? All right, this is what we're doing. This recording has started. Um, if you guys don't know who's joining today, we have a very awesome person uh, going on. Uh, and I'm getting his music ready. You guys, you guys, uh, the producers of Timeless should restart the what? Um, hey, I don't know if you know this, guys. Timeless was canceled. Uh, I don't think it's coming back. I hate to let you down. That's just the truth of the matter. We all got to move on <laughs> with our lives. I love all of you. But you know what? Um, it's time to start the show. There's been a lot of things going on in my head. Uh... I know, I know it sounds... What, mom, my mom's in here talking stuff. Uh, good to see you. Hey, Kendra. So we started the show today. So uh, this is the second almost real version of this show uh, called Going Live with Malcolm with Malcolm. Um, I started this... If you don't know the format of the show, the format of the show is this. I fuck around for about 10 to 15 minutes trying to get sound right. Uh, and then at some point, some friend of mine risks their career by going on the air live with me to talk about uh, whatever the hell I want to. Um, this one might actually get recorded. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Um, there's a couple different things on my mind. I started this just because, uh, I started this a while ago, but then I saw other people actually get it done. And I was like, I gotta get this done. What the hell, I'm in the house. Um, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, I don't know if you had, but there's a bit of civil unrest in the community. That's how you say it when you're a Negro. Community. Uh, you got to use all the letters. Uh, shout out to uh, Yvette Nicole Brown. Um, so uh, I thought to myself, what do I do today? I was going to have my boy Jonathan Slavin a couple days ago. I was going to have my boy Jonathan Slavin on here uh, because Johnny's a fucking genius. He was my partner on Better Off Ted, for those who don't know. Um, uh, yeah, Hannibal. There's some uh, unrest, some civil unrest. Um, that we're living in right now, which is sort of crazy. I was going to have my boy Jonathan Slavin on. Jonathan Slavin called me and uh, to check on me. And not the way all white people have been calling to check on me, but in a gay way. And it really it really helped. We were having this conversation. I was like, you know what? We, we uh, should do this talk over uh, this fake made-up show that I have um, um, and see how that goes. You know what I mean? Sort of spread healing or something. I don't know. Plus, it's Pride Month. Um, and all of that. And I was like, let's do that. Um, but then instead, uh, I was like, no, no, no. I was talking to my key. I was like, no, I need somebody blacker than Jonathan Slavin. Uh, and so this is how we got to it. So I'm going to introduce my next guest, uh, who's also my first guest today. I think I have to scroll through to try and uh, get back to your original thing. Because I think about 30 minutes ago, you were like, let's do this. And I was like, uh-huh. Uh, -huh. uh so let's see here, Silky Rich. Let's see if we got the proper music for you. What do we got? Oh, you know what? What is it? Playing through my headphones? Fuck that. You know what? Play it through here. Watch this. You know what? Fuck it. No music. This next man needs no music or any introduction. Yep. Uh, from Antebellum from uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, from Dear White People, the movie, and the TV show. Why is my mom calling me? Literally, literally, literally my mom, my mom called me right now. She's on the live. Hey, mama. She's in the room, and she calls me right now. She did it on purpose. I'm like, what the hell, what the hell are you doing? It's not a call-in show. <laughs> it's not a let her be I don't understand what she thought was gonna happen. That was so weird. Um she know I don't take her calls on a normal day. <laughs> I'm calling a long time listener. Yeah. That's enough out of her. Um I can't can't get, get, you know, I don't know why that's not working, but who cares? Oh, I bet there's an interference thing. Who gives a fuck? All right, anyway, Marquis, look at you, looking as pretty as you are, black. How are you? Where'd you get that chain? I'm black. <clears throat> um, where'd I get this chain? So funny story. Uh, I got two of them on. So one I got uh, in a jewelry district downtown LA. Mm -hmm. Another one is from uh, my father. Um, 
who is somewhere, uh, but I put the Hamsa on it, you know. Hamsa. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's clean, the energy. Israeli, uh, all of that. I, have a, I had an Israeli friend who gave me a Hamsa as a blessing, and I don't remember what I did with it, she, but she was a, a very lovely person. That's all I got. <laughs> That's what you got to say about anything that isn't you when you it's not your own religion. You got to be like, I met this uh, Jewish person, very lovely, very lovely. Uh, <laughs> Very lovely friend of mine. Right. Um, speaking of uh, Hollywood, the... Uh, th- <laughs> I'm taking shots! Here you go. I'm taking shots. That's why I brought you, man. I brought you because I was like, we're going to be irreverent. For those who don't know who you are, you're, you're an idiot. You've uh-huh. done so much. Um, I've known you for so long. You, you always that. play these, what I feel like, are these like really charismatic, powerful characters. Um, it might just be you. Maybe you're just powerful and charismatic. Uh, I've been saying the same two credits over and over again. But look, watch this. I'm gonna do like a like a research where I look you up on stuff. Yes. I like to go to IMDb to see if I uh, have a new job or something like that. I, <laughs> because as all as many jobs as you have, how can you keep up? I can't, man. Yeah. I can't. How how's your day? What, what how how are you? I mean. Yeah. It's a stupid question, no. right? It's a stupid question, but it's a weird thing. You're in Jay Z's Legacy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh-huh. a music. Video. I'm a music video ho. Um, you know, uh, pastime. Done done a couple of those. Champagne all over. Mm. Champagne, champagne all over. You know. Um, and please, <laughs> please, I encourage you people to talk in the, in the comments. What do we got? Let's look over some of the shit that you've done that I like. Uh, <laughs> Who the thing that we just worked on, or we, we're not gonna talk about that? You know what? This is why we're not gonna talk about that right now, is because I don't know when it's done or coming out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we we're filming something, and uh, I'm not gonna tell Abigail Spencer you said hello, because uh, I don't care whoever you just are. Um, <laughs> I don't care. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we were we were shooting this fucking shit, right? We were shooting Aretha with you know, uh, and with all these great, beautiful black people, um, and fucking COVID, man. Fucking COVID. Fucking COVID, man. We got a Revo in there. We got we got who's our boy? Our motherfucking boy that I'm gonna Omar. Omar is in there. Omar. Um, Courtney, Courtney, great. Oh, Court, Courtney Bivance, 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 Kimberly. Uh, what's all the glade? What are all the all the yeah, all these beautiful people? Rebecca, Rebecca. I should be eating. Yeah. So, um, um, because I was running behind. I got out of the bath earlier because I do my self care stuff, and I took a bath, a, a Epsom salt bath, because my body is soaked. Uh, my body is tired and. Racism is exhausting. Uh, is racism is very tiring. Uh-huh. So I was running behind, and my plan wasn't to eat. I wanted to do this outside. I wanted to go in the room and, um, you know, film the, the fires across the city and stuff. You should have, man. Racism, did you get your black calories in today? <laughs> you got to get your black calories. Black people got to consume more calories because of the protests and racism and shit. We gotta restore. We gotta restore. Like last night, was it last night or the day before? We had um, some stuff. Does him fried chicken? Uh, uh, I might make a sweet potato pie soon, but di- different things, you know, restore our uh, our spirit. So. What are you doing to restore your spirit? You're doing some self care. You're taking baths. If people don't know, we're in. Uh, oh wait, wait, wait. I'm got because I'm not good at transitions and I lose my attention span very easy. Um, <laughs> We're gonna get back to self care, so remind me. But I'm gonna tell people who you are, because that's how you gotta do this thing. You know what I mean? You gotta tell people who people are, because they, you know, certain people don't know you, and you gotta mix the audience. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know what? Also, I noticed, I think you're gonna have to, if we're talking o- over each other, we gotta take turns or something, because sometimes I can't hear you when you because talk. Because it's a real show. <laughs> this shit is live. You know I ain't got no clue. Hey, we ain't got no coof. We ain't got no real show. We go do whatever we do. If you came here for information, I think a lot of people thought 
that they'd come here and learn something. Oh. Yeah, because it was like, they were like, oh, okay, Marquis, dear white people, antebellum, we about to learn. They about to curse these white folks uh, out. Curse these motherfuckers the fuck out, man. Even white folks was coming at me. You gotta curse these quackers out. <laughs> Anything is possible. And no guarantees. Po- no guarantees. No guarantees. You're not gonna have me curse you out on the day you want me to curse you out. White people calling all day today. They're like, please curse me out today. This is the day. No, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on till fucking Valentine's Day. You're not gonna see it coming. All but day. You're not gonna see it coming. Surprise! Surprise! I thought we were just. I thought we were just doing that for just that week. No, motherfucker. <laughs> Yearly, you got to re up. I took my black calories today. I'm ready for your ass. I got mine. You know. Um. So again, we know you from. What do we got here? We got 19 weeks coming up. Antebellum. We got Dear White People, Tell Me Your Secrets. Never heard of that. Not going to watch it. Uh, Rosewood, the TV series. Oh, good, because the movie, there wasn't enough. <laughs> no. Wait, is Rosewood, is this the TV show? Is this about the movie, or is this where the where Morris Chestnut is a detective? Morris Chestnut. I wish it was about the movie, because <clears throat> that would be on brand uh, for me, I guess. But, uh, no, yeah, Morris Chestnut. A king. <laughs> did you and Morris Chestnut, when you guys were doing Rosewood, did you guys just take your shirts off a lot just to just to see, just to check each other's pecs? No, no, no. I um, I kept my I kept my clothes on for that. Okay, all right. If you want, wait. Where are you naked? Are you naked in something? Uh, not in that. No, that show. No, I was not naked in that show. Which show are you gonna get naked on? <clears throat> I don't know what's. I mean, who knows? No, it, it it's happened a lot of times, um, and I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm tired of it. What's your What's your proudest naked scene? This is for my lady followers. Mm. <clears throat> proudest naked scene. Um, proudest naked scene. None of them. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm at home, you know, rolling around with Tiff. Your, your Tiff, Tiff, who, if you guys don't know, Tiffany Boone, who's, uh, who's, your, who's wifey, and uh, who, who works a, a myriad of shit herself, uh-huh. um, she just piped in to say he do be naked on TV. Uh, <laughs> <What'd> she, <say? laughs> she was like, he stayed naked on TV. That's my accent for all black girls. <laughs> Which, by the way, my person of all black women is just my mom. It's just a younger... Cause my mom is my mom was from the project, so it's like it's just a younger. I just put a younger voice on her. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Who the fuck is screaming about French people? Your yours what? So I forgot. I forgot the speaking, the layering. Yes. Yes, I apologize. Where do you where do you get your black impression from? My mother. <clears throat> my mother, and it's not accurate at all. Ooh. Um, it's yeah. not high pitched. Um, and it's just not, it's not accurate. That's what's funny about, uh, folks who do, th- who think they're doing good accents. It's like, I grew up, um, with my mom and my impression of her is horrible. Mm. So I can't imagine <laughs> if you just live randomly with no black people, you're going to suddenly have a good accent. Even while Robin Williams, even till his death, he was just doing Mr. T <laughs> whenever he did a black voice. <laughs> it's amazing. Robin Williams. Love him. <laughs> Love him. So what else we got? We got you were in the Run DMC TV series. Oh, that was a thing. Uh, with my boy Dumbfounded, who was a, a, a rapper in it. Yeah, battle rapper. It was it was cool. We shot that in like K Town. It was a K Town like. I'm not good at talking about uh, uh, projects. You're literally horrible. Hmm? You're horrible at it. Huh? Oh, yeah. You're horrible. <laughs> why, why, why would you press me? Like, I don't. I just, I did the job. Right. I went. I checked. You did it. Okay. Here's, here's, here's the ones I want to mention that that stick out for me. Damn, you got a long ass list. I'm old. Uh, did you perform a song called "My Life" on a show called Browsers in 2013? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> 
fact, like I did research. I'm just looking at it. I'm like, I don't know if you remember in <coughs> 2013, you did a TV movie called Browsers, performed a song called My Life. That was the initial uh, stages of Amazon's television uh, production days, but you had to vote on what pilot you liked, and nobody liked ours, and um, rightfully so. But shout out to you know everybody that was involved with that. Fair. Uh, I'm gonna mention um, just the projects that I have a direct connection with because that makes it interesting for me. Chocolate News you were on with David Allen Greer, who I did Peoples with. You were Soldier Number One. Soldier Number right. One. Cracking that shit up. Um, c- community with my girl, Yvette. You played Special Agent Glenn somebody. Who she was also on last season's uh, show. Uh, not show. Dear White People. Uh, uh, Coco's Mother. And she was Coco's White. Mother on Dear White People. I totally forgot about it. Did you guys talk about your episode of Community? <laughs> I don't. I don't. You don't remember doing it, do you? You don't remember doing it, do you? You don't remember doing the show, do you? <laughs> you have no idea that you were on that show. I, you just found out right now. Found out. Um, yes, I, I, I don't recall. It's like a deposition. You can ask him. Okay. Um, I don't know what the fuck you saying. Uh, this is amazing, says Steve Zerg. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you one more thing you did. Oh, I know where you were naked. True Blood? Yeah. That- yeah. I don't think I don't think I knew you during Wait. I think I just started. Okay, so here's the thing. Me and you met doing Dear White People the movie. Yeah. Right? Um for those who don't know about that, that how that movie came about or how I was involved in the movie. I don't care about the general movie, but how I was involved. A um, bunch of you got actually cast, right? You guys did it or you knew people and, and they knew how great you were and it was great. I, long story short, you're a great actor and people want to hire you. Um, I had done a movie that I did with David Allen Greer, Peoples, um, which was produced by Stephanie Elaine. Um, and so who's, if you don't know who she is, she's one of the foremost producers, creators of movies, not just movies, but of black movies and great black movies that you're seeing and, and is an influence, uh, for decades. Look her up. She's amazing. Um, she calls me, I've probably told you this story. She calls me, I think it's a Sunday or some shit like that. I'm half asleep. I'm with my woman at the time, different woman. Um, I'm not good at relationships. Uh, so he <laughs> calls me. Uh, she might might have been an email. Might have been an email, and it was um. It, it was like, hey, are you around on Tuesday for a movie? I was like, what? I mean, yeah, what? Let's go. And then um, I get an email or a phone call from Effie Brown. Right. Effie Brown, who's who's amazing, who uh, got into it with Matt Damon on Project Greenlight. <laughs> Matt Damon was like, you got to do race last. <laughs> got to focus on race last. <laughs> like, okay. Um, but whatever, near, here nor there. Um, but she calls me to say uh, such and such actor can't do it. I think I can say he don't give a fuck. It's Mike Epps. You know what I mean? He don't give his movies in 20 years. 50, 72 years old. Uh, he, has a, he has a huge career. I'm doing a podcast from my office. Uh, <laughs> but they were like, he, he can't do it. Can you do it? I was like, fuck yeah, man. I'll be fucking Mike Epps' backup. Fuck it. Yes. I was like, that's better than when they were trying to make me the new Chris Tucker. <laughs> Back when agents only, they only know one black person at a time. They're like, you're Chris Tucker. Really? feel like he's a specific person. Do you ever get that? Did they try when you were first coming out? They were, were did they try and mold you after a particular celebrity? They thought they that you were like. Hmm, that's a good question. I mean, I know I've been, you know, second, second choice to some some people and and whatnot. Um, Name names. I want documents. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the people came for. Risk your career. 
still still never first choice. Um, but that's that's cool. Uh, but uh, no, I don't feel like I haven't I haven't got that yet. If I had, they haven't said it to my face. Good, good. M- to molding, um, but yeah, not yet. I feel like they said it to my face. I, yeah. I feel like somebody said Chris Tucker, and I was like, oh. And no slight against Chris Tucker, it's just. I'm not Chris Tucker, I guess. Right, right. I mean, if it's <laughs> Dave Chappelle, you know, I mean, even then. But you know what? They didn't know who the fuck that was at the time when I was coming up. You know what I mean? When I was coming up, they were like, "Hey, you look like that dude from Robin Hood Men in Tights." You know what I mean? I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Had no clue. You were in the newsroom. Did you know that? Say again. You were in the newsroom. I was. Yeah, with Jeff Daniels. That was, yes, I was. Motherfucker, yes! Yeah. I'm glad I brought up IMDb because you have no memory. I need... Like, what the hell? Of your career. I need IMDb for, like, my personal life. I feel like people have all these quotes about things that I've said. Yeah. And I, I don't want to wait for my funeral to remember what happened to me. I will be there, and I will tell, I will tell it all. I will tell... It Thank you. I can tell. Thank you. So... Speaking of self-care and these weird times and how we're doing it, and in all honesty, we weren't speaking about self-care. But speaking of that, <laughs> smooth transition from Malcolm. We didn't come here for transitions. No. Um, <coughs> that's, a, that's just a slight case of COVID. Don't I, even worry about it. <laughs> hashtag COVID free. Shout out. Hashtag COVID. You know what's sad? I'm the type of person, because I make uh, jokes, and there are people that like, you can see they've had their like COVID picture that they put up, and it's like the lat. What is this? Remember you ate the mark? Oh, who's talking about this? Who's talking about? This? And the cops rolled by, and um, you know, Marky. Now, no, Marky. This is why he called me on Twitter. You know, one of the blackest dudes he know. But I tell you, who's extra black is this man, Deron Horton. I don't think I ever say this motherfucker's name right. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker. You know what? This is why I don't trust Deron. He reminds me of you, me and you combined, but he's younger by like 10 years or some shit, so it's like scary. Yeah. That's- it's, it's scary. For, for those don't, that don't know him, he's uh, Horton is on your show, um, playing a role that in the movie was Tyler James Williams, mm-hmm. um, who's my boy, who I love. Um, and he also was on, I think, one of the seasons of American Horror Story when they go to the 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, so other than taking walks with your boys and almost getting stopped by the cops, how are you? What are you doing, man? Like, what do you do? Like, are you rich? Like, I don't really know. Like, I don't go to your home or your life or stuff like that. You know? We are no. not. Is this a house? But you got a woman, though. You guys both make money, so, like, you'll be rich at some point. Yeah, you know, right now, the dog, uh, that's our feeding a dog and staying alive. That's our main priority, and giving giving some monies away to the uh, things that are going on. Um, definitely blessed to be in a position where uh, we can stay inside. I mean, and look and and whatnot, and uh, you know, make our contributions. Yeah. yeah. But, are you guys? Uh, can I mention that you guys had an anniversary? Mm-hmm. Okay, I won't mention it. So one of the things I like, <laughs> I gotta mention it. Uh, I thought we were just like, I was like, <laughs> you know what's funny? I thought we'd get here and we'd talk about some shit about fucking the marches and how that's going and what. Uh, but I don't feel like it. That's fine too. I I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed. To, what are we supposed to do? What are you doing to stay sane, man? Are you just Fucking making love to your wife and watching old episodes of the newsroom. What? <laughs> watching, um, what are we watching? We're watching a lot of Hulu stuff right now. Um, but I mean, it is, I mean, you know, we don't have to go all into it, but um, I've had to <clears throat> reshift my focus um, in the last couple of days on how to take care of myself and how to still be informed and how to uh, do my part and. What I've been saying is, you know, operate on my highest frequency, whatever that looks like. It doesn't mean to 
shun out the pain. It doesn't mean to not go burn down something if that's what I feel I want to do. Um, if that's my highest frequency at that moment, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, being very particular about my energy and uh, the energy I allow in and the energy that I put out, um, especially right now. Because even, I mean, there was some family stuff that was going on before, you know, uh, these things uh, hit right at the start of the U.S. being shut down uh, for COVID and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was a whole lot. And everybody, everybody that I talked to was going through a lot of stuff. So, um, you know, you just have to do what's right for you is what I feel. There's a lot of, here, here's what's happening in my personal sphere in regard to all of that, what I, what I think you may or may not relate to. Um, and I'm going to take, I'm going to try and take the funniest things out of this. Well, all of this shit is crazy, but I'll try and take the most interesting, funniest shit. So here, here here's the two things that I, that I want your opinion on. One, uh, it's a, br a beautiful thing you said about operating on your highest frequency. Um, I, I do my best to do that. Um, but you know, we, we're going to do, um, <laughs> so, but so there's this, these, these two th things that keep happening, which is one, all my white friends are checking on me, right? Which is, uh, which is amazing. I tell this story. I was talking to, I have my blurred group and I tell this story of how, um, uh, there's this guy I went, I, I'm from New York. I went to Stuyvesant high school. Um, there's this guy that a bunch of us were all friends with football team, blah, blah, blah. He goes on, becomes this uh, notorious murderer, right? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, my delivery is hilarious. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. My delivery is fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, so, so what happens is he kills his parents, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Before that happens, right? You saw him slow. You saw him being different, a little bit weird. Um, and I remember seeing him at a high school reunion and uh, and his hair was longer. He was he just had this look. It was so weird. And I gave him a look. I didn't say hi to him at the high school reunion, but I gave him a look like, hey. Kill me last. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I gave him that look and I'm trying to figure out if that's what some of these phone calls are <laughs> like if some of these phone calls are like, hey, man. When the revolution starts, kill me last. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. I know where you're coming from. I felt that energy. Yeah. There's, there's different energies, and I don't want to, you know, it's a weird thing because I think people are trying to, you know, support and, and show their support. But it's a weird thing because, you know, and I've had a myriad of, and I'm not, I'm not downing any, you know, any of my white friends for doing that, but I've had a myriad of different reactions and some of it you can tell is for you they're worried about you some of it you can tell they're worried about themselves and how how they're gonna look in this moment now that people are being so vocal mm -hmm. um, and then the other part even when it's the best of intentions is uh, I can't deal with this yeah I can't I can't I'm living my life, and also, this isn't new. Yeah. This isn't, none of this are, is new. And that shouldn't, I'm too used to it. And I shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be, you know? But it's not new. Yeah. So the concern is weird for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my, my boy Damien Poitier, uh, I love saying his name, Poitier, um, he, has some, me. he has some meme, right? It's, it, it's Kermit versus Kermit, right? One of those Kermit, evil Kermit things. And he's like, and it's like, I think the good Kermit is like, you know, thank you guys for checking in and supporting. Right. And then the bad Kermit is like, where were you 15 murders ago? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? Absolutely. And so I think the, the worry, not necessarily with anyone I know personally, but in general is – how long this feeling of concern is going to last. Yeah. You know, you know how, how long are other voices going to care? And I, I will tell you as, uh, you know, seeing it on TV and, and, and the few protests that have gone, gone to since this has happened, it does feel new and different. You know, it do, I, I literally saw a white person go, 
a white woman go, use your privilege, stand in the front, that shit. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. Are we, are we, we pulling a reverse World War II? We pulling, a, <laughs> okay. We got, we, you know how they got Soulville when the black people was used in the front lines in the military? Now we got blue-eyed Soulville. I didn't know we was going to have that. I didn't know we was going to have blue-eyed Soulville, and I appreciate it. That's, I, I appreciate it, you know. And the conversations that I'm not going to say any names, but, the, you know, the, the thought that I've heard was, you know, um, that we're tired of black people dying for this stuff. It's white people's turn. Not to die, <laughs> but to do the work. You know, to go out there and, and do the work, especially if you're covered and whatnot. I mean, <laughs> this is white people's issue. Yeah. Um, they should be on the front line. Yeah. But well, you know, yeah, well, you know, it's it, it, it's white people's issues, but black people's problems. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. And even as you're talking about, you know, I, I feel the same way in, in regards to uh, a lot of my white friends or even white people that I work with, representatives calling, uh, uh, sending emails to check in, how I'm doing, uh, how are we doing, apologizing. A lot of white people, people are apologizing, um, which is odd for me to hear. Um, and I've kind of just said the same thing, like, thank you. I mean, I don't have any other words uh, other than Thank you, because it's like, I don't know what you want me to do with your guilt. I can't do anything. I can't do anything with it. We were, we're already dealing with enough. Um, so you call me crying. <laughs> I, I, it's literally like I'll be on the phone like. I, I, yeah. I yeah. Um, but it's also, you know. Uh, a lot of people say, well, we don't want to not say anything, um, which I also appreciate. I just don't have language for it. I don't know what to do with it, so I'm not going to do anything with it except for say uh, thank you uh, and please continue to do your part. Here's what I'm amazed at. I'm amazed at the eloquence of black people in expressing their grief. Because it says two things to me. It says we are prepared for it and used to it, which is incredibly uncomfortable. It's incredibly uncomfortable how prepared we have to be and how prepared we are. I remember I've been, I think the very first time I had to deal with this is going to be about race, right? And and the question and the person asking me doesn't even realize it's about race. And that was I think when I was 22, 23, 23 years old. I did a show called Luis, what Louis Louis Guzman, right? Luis Guzman. Right? That's like almost 20 years ago for me, right? Less than that, but you know, I don't give a fuck. Been here. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm here, baby. Been here. Been here, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shit. I'm black. I'm happy. I'm older. <laughs> um, and so I remember the motherfucker, right? I'll never forget this motherfucker. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, you didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. Um, he goes, um, so you're from bed you know, Brooklyn, you know, what made you get out? And on the surface is... You know what? On the surface, it's, 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 it's still obnoxious. It's an obnoxious question because this is what it this is what it struck for me. It struck for me that it was expected that I would not make it, like that I would not move, that I would not get money, simply because of the area that I was from. This guy, this journalist, I'm I'm doubtful. I don't remember him. I don't remember his inf his his uh, fucking background, but. That was a perfectly understandable question with no undertones, but you're from Bed Stuy. What made you make it? That tells me everyone from Bed Stuy is supposed to fail. That looks like 
everyone that looks like me. Bed Stuy is a black, and this was Bed Stuy in twenty in two thousand three. So, so everyone is supposed to die apparently. So I don't even know what he means by make it. Do you know what I mean? Like survive, be alive, have money, be successful, be intelligent. You know, it's a it's a million different things that I think people don't see how it affects people, and I think now people are getting some sort of awakening of something but you know the problem the problem with uh with civil rights <laughs> i'm going to rally against civil rights for a second um there's no right that minorities of all kind and uh i'll put women in there i'll put, i'll put i'll put white women i'll put you in there too uh, but just for this section <laughs> Just for, I was talking to somebody the other day. I was like, look, there are privileges I get as a man. Oh, shit. This interview is going to fuck up in five minutes. Only show ruined by battery power. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to do this quick. I was like, I get a lot of, as a man, there's privileges I get that you don't get because you're a woman. But as a white woman, there's privileges that you get that all minorities don't get. You know? And that is the Becky the Karen shit that motherfuckers are talking about. Uh, um, so, but the thing about civil rights, as I was saying, hate civil rights, um, is that there's no right that any minority has ever gotten that they haven't had to continuously fight for. There's no, no right, right. Yeah. There's no right that stayed your right since the beginning. You know, we, we, we get, we finally get freedom, you know, and then there's Jim Crow laws. Right. And then they have, and then you have the police. <laughs> You know, they have the overseers. Do you know what I mean? They try and take back voting. You know, they didn't want us to vote. And now they got gerrymandering, right? And all this stuff. And, and so what folks, I think, need to understand is that there's never a time where civil rights simply succeeds. It progresses, but it never ends. Do you know the fight, the fight, because there will always be that contingent that disagree with you, you know, like Michael Chase said, where it's just like, we can't agree that black lives matter. They can't just matter. Right. That's an affront to you. Just to matter. Right. Just to matter. That's a, that's a hard, that's a hard thing. So, um, I don't know. I'm going to leave. I want to leave on something that makes us feel good or at least makes us feel like we can uh, vibrate a higher energy and, and create something good. Um, and positive and go, how do we do this? Because as, as black people, it's our responsibility to help everyone out through their, through racism. Uh, <laughs> so, um, instead of for the betterment of the world, cause fuck the world, man, like let, let it burn until we stop dying. Uh, <laughs> how are you, what do you, what are you doing? What do you need? And what is making you happy? What's, What's up, Jamar? Jamar Michael, who's also on your show. I did, I did an indie with him. That motherfucker's going off on Instagram. That motherfucker, he's on, he's on, the, he's on there more than he's off. I'm, wor I'm worried about him. Instagram owe him a check. Man. <laughs> he might have to be the first motherfucker that needed a check. So tell me this. Tell me this. What are you? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play my fave five. Um, so the end of the show is where I come up with the five things. It's a five question thing. Um, it's not a real thing because I make it up each time. So. Just be ready, and it has to happen quickly because I got about 10% uh, left on my battery. Okay, so, because I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, quick. Um, what is making you happy these days? Uh, my wife. Great. What is the role of celebrities during this moment? What is the role of celebrities? Oh, my God. I don't need, uh, Is it too complex? Man, I feel like everybody's got to do what's right for them, but also celebrities, like, need to chill in the sense of if, if you're not an activist then don't try and lead uh people that there's already people in place doing those jobs. do your part spread information that's proper that's correct um and if you got money get it Fuck. there we go there we go that's true you know motherfuckers try to be martin luther king and they're martin lawrence uh the <laughs> no that was just an easy. That was just easy. That's nothing. That's nothing against Martin Lawrence. I love Martin Lawrence. Uh, all right. Um, what's your um, favorite movie that you've done? Oh, favorite project you've ever done that everyone needs to see. They should see it. Ah, what am I saying? I haven't said yet. 
Quick, quick. We only got like 5% battery power. I haven't done it yet. You haven't done it yet? Yeah, I haven't done it yet. Is that fair? Yep. Yep. It's very fair. <laughs> Some might say their favorite stuff is that, that Reggie shit from Dear White People. Up to now, yes, I will I will go with that. Well, I did Dear White People. You were in that. You were in that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. I think, yeah, I think you're still on it, actually. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, and um, one last thing, favorite thing, period, favorite, just any favorite thing in the history of anything that exists. You said my favorite thing, period. Period, history of anything that ever existed. To- um, uh, the movie Misery, with Kathy Bates. Wow, did not see that coming. <laughs> did not see that coming. Watching it since I was a child, reciting all the lines. Okay. Well, that tells me um, something very unsettling about you. Um, Marquis, thank you for doing this. It's the realest fake talk show there ever was. Um, you're amazing. I love you. Give love my you love to much. Tiffany. Um, keep creating. You guys do amazing work. I love all your work. And here's to everything brilliant that we're going to do in the future. God bless you, brother. All day, baby. Have a good one. <laughs> Keep shit real! (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you. I think that might be the very first show that we've had that didn't end with my phone turning off. Um, So close. Sending love love right back to you, Tiffany. Love to um, all the fans, everyone who joined in. Um, Maybe this will be up at some point if I've actually recorded it. I doubt I have. Um... Love you guys. Do not go gently into that good night. Uh, I'll see you next week when my guest will be Jonathan Slavin of Better Off Ted and or Ahmed Best um, from many chapters of Star Wars, um, but has a brand new show called Jedi Temple. Um, it's a kid's show. He's hosting, producing. He's, I think, the first um, sort of, not lead, but like first number one black uh, lead right on uh, in the Star Wars world. I mean, everyone knows John Boyega, but I think he's like you know number you know uh, fucking Ahmed's number one on the call sheet, and he's producing and he's creating this. He's creating this for you, for me, for his children, for our children, for all the children. Um, it's going to be amazing. I think it comes out June tenth, so I'll promote it. Either way, um, you guys have been a wonderful audience. I can only guess because I haven't been paying attention to your comments. This is Malcolm Barrett going live with Malcolm with Malcolm. Have a good day. Love each other. We're going to do this.